Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this session. So now let's solve one more important problem related to this Fourier transform. It's a very important problem. This might come for the exam as well. Okay. Yeah. So now we'll solve this problem. The question is, we need to find the Fourier transform f of x when f of x is equal to one minus mod x when mod x is less than or equal to one, and it is zero when mod x is greater than one. And also we need to deduce that from the integral zero to infinity sine square t by t into uh, the dt is equal to pi by two. Okay. So here we now we should not evaluate. We should not find this value. They have already given the value for this. We need to just prove that it is equal to pi by two. But the procedure remains the same. First we need to find f of s. After that we need to find the inverse Fourier transform. So that these values remains the same. So first now we need to find the Fourier transform. Okay. Yeah. So I have directly written the substitution that is from the integral from minus integral interval is from minus one to one. Since uh, the mod x is less than or equal to one, right? So the interval is from minus one to one, and uh, I have told it right. Uh, the previous intervals, that is minus infinity to minus one, is not mentioned, and uh, the interval from uh, one to infinity, that is x is greater than one, the function f of x is given as zero. So those two terms, intervals will be neglected. Only this term would remain, and the given f of x here is one minus mod x. But the uh, as per the definition of mod x, we have two values for, for mod x. Mod x can be x as well as minus x, right? So in the same similar way, we we need to write the intervals as well. Okay? We know that mod x is uh, equal to minus x when the value of x is negative. That is when the value of x lies between minus one to zero, right? The value of uh, mod x is equal to minus x e power i s x into d x, and the value of mod x is positive when the limits are from zero to one. So I have just splitted the limits in this case. Like I have written it as from minus one to zero, and also from zero to one in order to satisfy the definition of the mod. Okay. So here the mod is positive one minus x into e power i s x into d x. Okay. So now for this we need to solve. Minus one to zero, minus into minus is plus. So this is one plus x into e power i s x into d x plus zero to one, one minus x into e power i s x into d x. Okay. So now we need to apply the Bernoulli's rule. Okay, for this function as well as this integral. So now we'll apply the Bernoulli's rule. First function as it is into the integration of second function e power i s x divided by i s minus the differentiation of this function that is differentiation of one is zero and x is one into e power i s x divided by i square s square. The limits are from minus one to zero plus first function as it is. Into the integration of second function minus the differentiation of this function is that is equal to minus one. Uh, min differentiation of minus x is minus one, right? Into the integration of the integrated function. The limits are from zero to one. So now the f of x value is. The upper limit is zero, so one plus zero is one into e power zero. Uh, the value of x is zero, so the whole the whole the power term will become zero divided by i s minus one into e power uh, x value is zero, right? So sub, uh, sub, when we substitute the value of x is zero, so the whole power becomes zero divided by i s square s square. Minus the lower limit, that is one plus minus one. So one minus one is zero. So this whole term will become zero. Minus e power minus i s, since the value of x here is minus one divided by i square s square. Plus now for this, 
again the upper limit is 1 so 1 minus 1 is 0 so the whole term becomes 0 I will not write that again so in the second term minus into minus is plus so e power uh, value of x is 1 so it becomes i s divided by i square s square minus the lower limit that is 0 1 minus 0 is 1 and the value is 0 so it is e power 0 by i s it's actually 1 into e power 0 by i s so 1 minus 0 is 1 and the value of x here is 0 so this becomes e power 0 by i s plus again minus into minus is plus e power 0 by i square s square okay so now we'll uh, align the terms we'll uh, remove all the brackets and we'll write it in a single line so we know that e power 0 is equal to 1 so i'm going to write it as 1 by i s minus 1 by i square s square minus into minus is plus so e power minus i s divided by i square s square plus e power i s divided by i square s square and again there is a minus sign so this becomes minus e power 0 is again 1 divided by i s minus into plus is minus e power 0 is 1 by i square s square okay so here we can cancel 1 by i s and minus 1 by i s okay so the required f of s now is equal to so here wherever there is i square substitute it as minus 1 okay so when we substitute this as minus 1 so the sign changes to positive so this becomes 1 by s square right and here from positive this becomes negative e power mi minus i s divided by s square again this is minus e power i s divided by s square this becomes plus 1 by s square so here you can see that 1 by s square 1 by s square are adding up so this we can write it as 2 by s square minus e power minus i s by s square minus e power i s by s square so here in these two terms 1 by s square is common and take that 1 by s square outside i will take uh, minus 1 by s square outside and the remaining terms are if we take minus 1 by s square common are e power minus i s plus e power i s i have taken minus 1 by s square common right so plus e power i s will be remaining so now again this is of the form of uh, cos right so since e power minus i s plus e power i s divided by 2 right in case of cos so again in for this term we need to multiply and divide by 2 so the final answer will be looking like this 2 by s square minus if you multiply the numerator by 2 it will be a 2 cos in place of theta that is there is s divided by s square again in these two terms 2 by s square is common take that outside 2 by s square into 1 minus cos s okay so we can keep this as the final answer but in so that in order to show that the question is we need to deduce that sin square t by t is equal to pi by 2 right so you can even further simplify the f of s here so we have an uh, trigonometric identity formula that is 1 minus cos theta is equal to 2 sin square theta by 2 right the same thing i'm going to write it here as well here also that is 2 by s square into 1 minus cos s is equal to 2 sin square in place of theta there is s so s by 2 so the final answer of f of s would be 2 into 2 is 4 4 sin square s by 2 divided by s square so this is your required f of s okay so now by using this f of s we are going to find the we are going to deduce the case which is given in the question so now we need to use the inverse Fourier transform okay we know that the inverse Fourier transform is given as f of x is equal to 1 by 2 pi minus infinity to infinity f of s into e power minus i s x into d s right so now here substitute the value of f of s minus infinity to infinity the value of f of s which we have got is 4 sin square 
s by 2 by s square into e power minus isx into ds right so now again you know we know that we need only the sign terms right in order to prove we don't need this e power term so how to eliminate this we have done in we have done previously in one problem that is we need to eliminate this by putting the value of x is equal to 0 in this whole equation that is this if we put the value of x is equal to 0 so this would be e power 0 that is equal to 1 so this term we will get eliminated yeah so the same thing we are going to do it here also we need to put the value of x is equal to 0 so this uh, f of x would be equal to f of 0 and f of 0 is given as 1 how is f of 0 1 so in the question it is given that 1 minus mod x right f of x is equal to 1 minus mod x so substitute the value of x here x is 0 right so 1 minus 0 is equal to 1 so the f of 0 which we get is equal to 1 so now we we'll write it this becomes f of 0 f of x is replaced by f of 0 is equal to 1 by 2 pi into minus infinity to infinity 4 sin square s by 2 by s square into e power 0 is 1 right so I am not writing it again so now f of 0 is equal to 1 1 upon 2 pi so now this the, again the same thing in order to replace the limits by 2 times 0 to infinity we need to check that whether this is an even function in most of the time this should be an even function okay so now let's we uh, let's check that that is we need to take f of minus s that is 4 sine square of minus s by 2 divided by minus s the whole square that is equal to f of minus s is equal to sin square of minus s by 2 is always equal to uh, sin square of s by 2 itself it will not be equal to minus so this is equal to sin square of s by 2 itself divided by minus s the whole square is equal to s square so this is equal to f of s only right so that we can say that it's an even function so now we can write the limits as 2 times of 0 to infinity into the given function that is 4 sin square s by 2 by s square into ds so now here again we can cancel some terms that is this 2 and 2 gets cancelled so the remaining terms are 1 upon pi 0 to infinity 4 sin square s by 2 by s square into ds but we have not reached the solution so in order to in the deduction case here in place of s by 2 there is t right there is t right so we are going to do the same thing here also as well we are going to replace the value of s by 2 is equal to t okay so put s by 2 is equal to t now uh, cross multiply this 2 to, uh, to the other side so this becomes s is equal to 2t so now we need to differentiate on both sides that is differentiation of s is ds and differentiation of 2t we can write it as 2 into dt okay so these values we are going to replace here okay so this equation will be now 1 upon pi into 0 to pi 4 sin square s by 2 is equal to t right divided by s square s square is equal to 2t s is 2t right s equal to 2t so s square equal to 2t the whole square and in place of ds now it is 2 times dt right so now 1 equal to so bring this 2 this 2 is the right bring it outside so this will be now 2 by pi from 0 to infinity 4 sin square t divided by 2t the whole square is equal to 4t square into dt so cancel this 4 and 4 so the remaining terms are 1 is equal to 2 by pi 0 to infinity sin square t by t square into dt so now we have completed 90 percent of the problem so now again cross multiply uh, bring this 2 by pi to the other side so now the required answer which we are getting is 0 to infinity sin square t by t square into dt is equal to pi by 2 I have taken 2 by pi to other side I have just cross multiplied yeah. so this is your required answer we have proved it that is hence proved yeah so these were the 
problems i guess we have solved five to six problems related to the fourier transforms all are very important okay all problems uh, you guys practice it very well all this five to six problems from this at least two or three problems might be asked in the whole question paper okay yeah so we have one more concept that is we are going to now discuss the fourier sine transform fourier cosine transform along with its inverse functions okay yeah in this uh, session now we are going to uh, discuss deeply about that and in from the next session we are going to solve problems related to them okay yeah okay so now we are going to discuss uh, another concept of this module itself that is till now we have discussed all the fourier transforms its general form along with its uh, inverse how to write the inverse so in the similar way here we have a set of formulas for fourier sine and fourier cosine transforms okay yeah so how these fourier sine and cosine transforms are given so first now we'll let's see about the fourier sine transform so let f of x be defined for all positive values of x then the fourier sine transform of f of x also it can be write, written as f uh, underscore s of or s small letter s underscore s of f of x is equal to f of s cap of s here we are slightly writing it as here in case of general fourier transform how we are writing f cap of s right so in order to uh, mention the fourier sine or cosine transform we are going to write it as s or c okay yeah so this is this is a fourier sine transform so f f of s cap of s is equal to 0 to infinity it is given as the limits are from 0 to infinity not minus infinity to infinity in general it is from minus infinity to infinity but in sine transform it is given from 0 to infinity f of x into sine s x into dx okay sine s x into dx now for this function we have its inverse function as well okay so similarly the inverse sine fourier transform is given of f cap of s s is given as f s inverse of f of s is equal to 2 by pi and the inter integral is from 0 to infinity again into the whatever we have found the Fourier sine transform right that we are going to write it here into sine SS, sx again the same thing sine sx and the parameter here is again changed to ds okay not dx ds sine sx into ds that's again we can write it as this term is equal to f of x again okay yeah this is the all about fourier sine transform similar way we are going to write the fourier cosine transform as well okay see the definition see the general form and compare it with the sine transform it is it remains the same here in, in case of fourier cosine transform in in place of sine wherever there is sine right replace it by cos that's it there are no other changes the limits remain the same the parameters remains the same everything remains the same in place of sine we are just replacing it by cos see other rest all the things remain the same okay this, this is the general formula for fourier cosine transform and this is the general formula fourier inverse cosine transform okay yeah so this you please make a note of this this is fourier sine transform fourier cosine transform okay yeah, so now it is visible I guess so, yeah. so please uh, make a note of these formulas these set of formulas you please make a note of these because from the next session onwards we are going to solve again uh, 5 to 6 problems related to these Fourier sine and cosine transforms okay and after that we have one more topic that is solving the integral equations in the question they would be giving the integral equations instead of the values of f of x and all they would be directly giving the integral equations and using that we are going to solve using Fourier transforms as well as this sine and cosine transform that's the last topic for this okay yeah so I guess in 7 to 6 to 7 to 8 sessions I am going to complete this module also okay so this is the advanced level of the Fourier series concept which we have studied okay this is a tricky module so if you practice this module this is an easy okay yeah so please make a note of this Fourier sine and cosine transform yeah, that's all for this session. In the next session, we are going to solve the problems, okay? Thank you.